So, I was going back through my old content, and I found out I made a Sheldon's Kit predictions video once we got the Sheldon's Picks reveal in early 2019. It's really been that long. And I want to see how accurate I was now that it's been a while. We obviously have the Sheldon's Picks, so I'm going to go through it. I'm going to see what I got right and wrong and what my ideas were back in early 2019. So I hope you all enjoy. So yeah, some uh, caveats about my old setup. Uh, black bars, uh, I recorded on my laptop, so there's gonna be a laptop fan, and my old mic was not great. So uh, yeah. I'm gonna be covering the three least relevant weapons first. So let's- Three least relevant weapons first. So I know at the time that this is gonna be Aerospray, Sploosh, and Squiffer. And it's just funny how well this is aged because Silver Aerospray has won a major. <laughs> Sploosh 7 is a Rainmaker niche, and Squiffer has gotten like second in many top tournaments and has a few notable weapons users using it. And I teamed up with the Squiffer in two years after this video, so you never know how balance is gonna end up. Let's start with the Aerospray. Now the Aerospray PG in the first game got Burst Bomb and Kraken. However, the basic Kraken of this game baller is already in this Aerospray, but I still think it could get Burst Bomb back. Well, I don't think Burst Bomb would be super helpful for it, I think it would still be nice as it made confirming kills just a little bit easier for it, and it'd give it a nice long-range poking tool. Uh, okay, so we got Burst Bomb right, and yeah, Burst Bomb's pretty nice on Arrow for its 5-hit kill, so yeah, sure. Well, it's not a single Kenta weapon or Sheldon's pick weapon yet that we know of has gotten Burst Bomb as a sub. Is that? Yeah, that's true. No Kenta collection weapon has Burst Bomb. All right, I for did not know that. Thanks, past me. And for the special, I think we should give it Booyah Bomb. Basically giving it the strike that the- All right, I got this one right. This game got, would be pretty interesting. And with its ability to do long range pressure with burst, Booyah Bomb could be used as maybe a panic button, maybe a way to start pushing in a zone and painting it quickly. Something like that, which I think would be interesting for it. Yeah, okay. So Spawn One Aerospray, the gold one, had mine and strike. So yeah, I guess strike going Booyah was my logic and then same sub open. So yeah, Aerospray right. That's one completely correct. So two out of 20. Next up is the Splushomatic 7. And the Splushomatic 7 in the first game, we've got Splat Bomb and Inkzooka. Now, a lot of people contrary like that to kid. what you may think, Inkzooka was not actually that good for it. The Neo Splash, the Neo Sploosh, my bad, of the first game got Kraken, which was a much more helpful special, which allowed it to go in aggressively. I do think we can keep Splat Bomb with it, as it's still a nice option for approach, poking, etc. For the special, I think it should get Ultra Stamp, basically the idea of hey, Kraken. Hey, we're okay. But I don't want to give this Baller because we're not trying to make something too similar to Aerospray. Okay, so I mean, Baller on Sploosh is gonna be pretty different from an Aerospray, but sure. So, kind of like the Kraken one the Neo Sploosh had in Splatoon 1, and Splat on the same stuff. And yeah, what I said was kind of accurate. I mean, Zuka was not bad for it by any means, but Zuka was 20 in the first game, so Sploosh had a really hard time charging it, I think was the main culprit. But having a aggressive special like Kraken really helped like Sploosh go deep in the first game, since it was invincible, so yeah. And hey, I mean, this kit ended up being pretty good for it, so hey, there we go, that's 4 for 20. Yes, Ultra Stamp is a good deal weaker than Baller. Wow, right. Yeah, at this time, this was before Stamp and Booyah got their buff, so the specials were really bad. Like, uh, Rush Mode on Stamp was super slow. Oh my god, yeah. And Baller exploded earlier and wasn't weight classed. Wow. Yeah, now the dynamics completely switched. Stamp is way better than Baller, so things change. It is Squiffer. While a little bit more relevant than the other two, it's still not very good. Yeah, I thought Squiffer was bad. But oh, you scrolled past it! Turn around! An interesting thing with a good you sub. dumbass! So, we're going to be giving I skipped past it. Yes, we're gonna be smart. giving it Fizzy Bomb. I think Fizzy would be absolutely Okay, so Squiffer didn't get Fizzy, obviously got suction, but Bamboo had Fizzy. I could count this I'm not gonna count this as a half point, but hey, like it was there. Fizzy on Squiffer would actually be pretty cool. What special though? It'd be able to use partial charges if Fizzy's connected. It'd have a good painting option, a good oh, poking yeah. option. And then for the special, we're gonna give it Ultra Stamp because again, the idea of Kraken like the original first book had, which had Suction Bomb and Kraken. Okay, so yeah, I think this is a solid kit. Fizzy and Stamp, so yeah. So Fizzy Stamp, basically about as close as we can to Splatoon 1 Fresh Clipper which had Suction Kraken, it didn't really see any use because uh, CRB had Splat Bomb Kraken and Range Blaster was good in the first game. I think Fizzy on Squiffer would actually be pretty insane. 
something I don't really mention here, I guess is because it's kind of new, but Swiffer with MPU Pain is pretty significant here. So Fizzy Bomb and a good special charging Swiffer would actually be pretty crazy because you could get so much of that special. I was hoping I would say Missiles because something like Fizzy Missile would actually be really broken on this thing, but that's still a fairly usable kit. I don't think Stamp is the best thing for it, but it works. Uh, this kit was completely wrong though, so uh, no points here. I think this thing could stand a chance with Fizzy Bomb because of how good of a sub weapon it is. Even if it gets nerfed, it'll probably still be the best sub weapon in the game like it is right now. Hey, I was right. It did get nerfed. It's still the best sub weapon in the game. So first, let's talk about NZAP. Oh boy, Now, NZAP. the NZAP 83 in the first game had Point Sensor and Kraken. One of these things was great, the other of which was Point Sensor. Hey, so we we're going to be ditching the point humor. sensor, but we're going to be basically keeping the Kraken premise, so we're going to be giving it Baller. A Zap with Baller? Okay, I like this because Zap, uh, Zap's faster than like 52, so you can two-shot combo out of it a lot easier since you have the mobility with run speed. So that's actually not a bad special for it, and it also gives it a more aggressive kit, which is something we don't really have. Unfortunately, Curtain 83 has Sprinkler and... Uh, Inkstorm, so it's like Zappa's three supportive kits. It would have been cool if I got an aggressive kit, so missed opportunity, Nintendo. You should have listened to me. For the sub, we're going to be giving a Torpedo. Torpedo has Baller. has a similar Mocker King thing, but the extra tick damage and paint would blend super well with that sub. Okay. Torpedo Baller. It's the Crappin' kit, so I mean, I know the kit pretty well. I don't know if Torpedo would be the best thing for it. It would be a nice combo sub, though, so if we're going with an aggressive Zap, having, like, rolled Torpedo would have worked. I, I couldn't give it Burst Bomb. I'm thinking Burst Bomb right now, but Burst Bomb with Baller is obviously too strong. So, I mean, it could be something like a Splat Bomb. Like, 85 in the first game and Splat instead of Suction. That would be my thoughts, like, nowadays. So, a Splat Bomb Baller could be pretty cool with it. Yeah, all right. That is another two wrong, but still a nice kit. All right, so now we're four out of 20 still. Now, also contrary to popular belief, the ink brush is actually a pretty solid main weapon. Yeah, back then people really hated ink brush still. This was a weird time, but yeah, people thought ink brush was like really bad. I don't, I don't know why. In Japan, there's a good ink brush that has seen good top level usage. Funny enough, this is talking about Terumi, and there's still an ink brush top level ink brush player to this day. It hasn't changed. Still an ink brush player three years later. Two most requested subs for both ink and octobrush generally are both burst bomb and curling. And while I debated which one I would rather have it get, in okay, the end so I had to go with curling. Giving curling. it a hypermobility sub along with a hypermobility main weapon allows this thing to skate across the map even faster than it does already. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, it would be interesting. I think that would be more interesting on octobrush because octobrush's roll isn't as fast. I mean, if you stack swim speed on uh, brush, then yeah, maybe curling could be more useful. But I mean, the main weapon's already pretty good at rolling around through enemy ink, so I would I would say burst bomb would probably be way better here. I'm not sure why I pick curling. It'd make more sense on an octobrush. I think the special it should get is ink storm. A bit of tick damage can be really helpful for securing the kill, as it does 30 damage. So just a little bit of extra damage. Curling to allow storm. It to possible. Uh, curling storm is. I I think this kit's kind of trash. <laughs> Like, uh, yeah, Permabrush having Sprinkler armor is definitely way better than whatever the f*** this was. I mean, a Storm was a bit more useful back then, but still, really, this was the best we could come up with, Char. Thankfully, it's wrong, but yeah, that's uh, not a good kit. I'm going to be giving the Bamboo Mark 3 uh, Torpedo because I think it'd be absolutely great for marking opponents and being able to hit them, and Bamboo combos off the tick damage amazingly. Okay, Torpedo, I like that. You could roll Torp combo with the partial charge. You wouldn't even need the full charge. You need to do like a 65 damage shot, but that could be really cool. Torp with it would be nice. Give it a poking sub. Doesn't use too much of its ink tank even though Bamboo had 14 instead of 11 shots right now. But all right, good sub. Not what happened, but good sub. The special, there's two I'm kind of tied with, either Ink Storm or Ink Armor. Ink Storm for some oh reason- Oh god, Armor, no. You don't know what you might have created. Distance. And Ink Armor would be amazing because of how well Bamboo paints it could allow it to get Ink Armor quite frequently. So please make it like 200, 210, 220 with it because god damn it, we don't need more Ink Armor spamming weapons. Oh, that aged so poorly. Like back then, this is when we didn't have much armor support. Yeah, armor spam only went up from this time, so big sad. At least I had the foresight for it to be like 200 or 210 and uh, Bamboo Mach 1 when missiles became like a kind of equivalent special to armor ended up being 200, so okay. Uh... I think Torpedo and Armor could be pretty interesting, and Torpedo and Storm could be pretty interesting. Storm's actually a lot nicer on Bamboo with the 85 damage. I like Torpedo Storm. I think it gives it a good amount of painting capability, a lot of combo potential. Pretty solid kit. 
Again, we didn't end up getting it, but I like this idea. I think this one's actually pretty good. It's fine. I have good weapons to take armor, but please don't make them spam it as their only real strength. It's so annoying. Ah, Junior. Let's get into the Soda Slosher. Now, the Soda Slosher got Splat Bomb and Exuka in the first game. And it was a super underrated kit. Splat Bomb allowed it to combo just like the Slosher does with Suction Bomb, but with a much more viable sub to combo with. Nice slosh! <laughs> <laughs> nice aim, bro. Holy sh... Uh, can you tell I recorded this all in one take? There we go. So Splat Bomb could allow it to do it better. So I literally want to give the exact same kit in this game, just replacing Zuka with Inkjet. And I think it'd be a really interesting combination. Okay, finally, I get something else right with Splat Bomb. Uh, I don't know how 2019 me didn't realize this, but I should have said Fizzy Bomb, because soda, soda, soda can, like... I don't know how Nintendo or me missed this, but I mean, hey, Splat Bomb's right, so we got five now. Um, Inkjet. Inkjet would have been pretty nice for Bucket. None of the Sloshers even have Inkjet, so that would have been really cool. That's actually kind of a shame. I mean, Burst Launcher's still really nice. I don't think anyone expected another Burst Launcher weapon, and it makes a ton of sense with uh, Soda, since Bucket really likes Burst Bomb. So I'm happy with the Soda kit there, but Fizzy Jet could have been cool too. If there was a fourth kit, that's what I would personally want right now. But all right, solid kit, and we get another sub right. Next, Grim Range Blaster. Not gonna beat around the bush. This got Burst Bomb in Splat 1, and deserves to have Burst Bomb in this game. All right, another thing now. right. Okay, yeah, Burst Bomb is a lot worse with range. I don't think I explained it very well, but uh, damage up would affect your Burst Bomb. The indirect damage radius could go up to 80 instead of 70. So yeah, Burst Combos are really unreliable in this game, and then also Bomb Defense. So yeah, I, I was right. Burst with range would still be nice, but it would be a lot weaker than it was in spot one. As for the special, a lot of people are saying Stingray. I say no. Giving an aggressive weapon Stingray is a mistake. And I also debated giving this weapon Splat Bomb. So how about giving it Splat Bomb Launcher so it can combo off the Splat Bombs, and it also gives it a painting and aggressive tool, helping to mitigate its weaknesses. Okay, I don't hate this kit. Splat Bomb Launcher sounds weird, but... Like I mentioned, you can kind of combo it with the weapon shots or use it as a get off me. So it's like not a bad, it's kind of like Soda with Burst Rush, but not as strong. So, I mean, I kind of like it. I think uh, Stamp would have been a lot better, but I mean, at this time, Stamp wasn't very good. So I understand why I'd want a Bomb Rush and giving it away to Pain Zone could actually be pretty useful for it. So, I mean, yeah, nowadays I would say Stamp in a heartbeat, but at the time I can totally understand because Stamp was just really bad back then so yeah i like this kit and i was right about burst bomb so we'll take another point next up the good old cherry h3 oh h3 oh boy i say one, one i wanted sure. to get toxic mist no i don't ink storm, ink storm okay would help i mean mist on it's not terrible but not great either i mean you could maybe use it to line up a three burst i don't know it's not really that exceptional Storm would be okay with it. It'd be cool to get Storm with it, actually. I mean, I think that'd be nice for a supportive H3. But yeah, it needed a different sub than that, and I'm completely wrong on this one. If you land two hits, so it'd do a good amount of damage, especially now that damage up exists. Landing only two hits is actually kind of hard. Excuse me. Aren't you guys so happy I edit my videos? What the f- Yeah, landing two hits is hard, but you get the idea. You could land Bro! <laughs> and two hits and it could combo with Inkstorm well. It helps boost its amazing painting capabilities on things like zones. And it'd overall be interesting. I wish I said wall. Wall is kind of nice on H3. I'm not quite sure why I didn't. I even played Cherry in S1. Odd, but all right. Lastly, we have the Heavy Remix. As you can tell by why I said about Torpedo in the beginning and that two of each weapon need to have it, you already know I'm planning to give this weapon Torpedo. I think a long range weapon with Torpedo could be interesting. Because Torpedo takes a while to actually travel towards opponents, then he could get a charge ready in time and combo off of it. I guess. Power. As for the special, well, Booyah Bomb. While it may not hey, seem super right. amazing with it, it could help a little bit in close quarters combat, give it a nice painting tool in the zone for it to push in, and I think it'd just be an interesting choice. Alright, I was right about Remix special. Finally, I get another special right. Alright, okay, okay. And that's all the weapons. So, I ended up with a total of 7 out of 20 correctly predicted subs and specials, and in terms of complete kits, 2 out of 10 with the sploosh and aerospray. Not bad for 2019 me. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting to look back into the thought process of this time. I don't think there's too many videos I'd want to watch back, mostly because my old content is trash. Like, I, I didn't put any effort into this. I just made videos for fun. So just training room, talking, recording in one take, and then uploading it. 
with the basic idea of a script literally in my head, but hey, it's cool to look back at this, and I like the idea of the predictions, because we're kind of doing predictions for what kits are going to happen in Splatoon 3, so good to take a look at my track record, and hopefully when we predict Splatoon 3 weapon kits, I can get it a little closer to correct. But hey, this was a very different video, but I hope you all enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you all in a future video.